Hey everybody, Spiritual Whistleblower with a second bonus video today and I'm gonna chill because I got too much to do today. But um, before we get into this video, I offer phone coaching, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour. Click the link below, there's a whole calendar. You can choose your own day, time. You can book two, three weeks away. You just leave a small deposit and lock in your date, okay? Look for the link, it's pinned as the first comment and um, just follow the instructions, okay? Great. Now, um, I want to talk about, I should have talked about this a long time ago. There's many of you that come to me for advice. Um, believe it or not, people book me for different things besides getting, you know, um, coaching on narc abuse. They book me because they need advice. Um, people have asked me, how do I start a book? You've written eight books. I want to write my first book or people have booked me for, uh, advice on starting a business. They want business coaching. I'm really honored. And um, it's cool, but it, it, it throws me off guard a bit sometimes. So I, I do offer those types of services. It's usually uh, exceptional, but I prefer coaching people through narcissistic abuse. But uh, for those of you ladies, I have a webinar coming up because I, I promised you a few months ago that I would do a webinar. If you're starting a business, you're building a brand, one of the dangers you're going to face as an entrepreneur is toxic, covert female narcissists trying to sabotage your business. I've dealt with it. I run a very successful life coaching business myself. And I will tell you, they don't just come to attack. They're very conniving. They're very friendly. They'll smile on your face. They'll act super supportive. What they're doing is they'll try to latch on. They, they will befriend you. And what they're doing, they're studying you. They want to wear your wigs, your hairstyle, your makeup, your clothes. You know, they love your swag. They, 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 they are copying and mocking and studying you because the plan is to go behind your back and sabotage and destroy everything you're building. It's very dangerous. So I do have a webinar coming up. I will teach you all how to spot, identify, and protect your brand from these horrible female covert narcissists. I call them pick me's. There's a lot of slang, pick Misha, pick me's, Dustiana's, but they're evil and they're demonic and they're jealous of successful women. Um, I don't talk a lot about the things that I endure behind closed doors, um, from toxic clients. I am a life coach. I do promote my phone coaching service. I have an amazing turnaround of clients that keep coming back. That is the greatest sign for me. When my clients keep coming back and coming back for more coaching and, and you know, I see nothing but progression. Every time they come back, hey, I'm doing great. This wonderful thing happened to me. I took your advice and this happened. That is the greatest confirmation as a life coach when I hear nothing but good news from my returning clients. And I have a great turnaround of returning clients, believe that. But I don't talk about the dark side of things that I experience with life coaching. And that is the, the clients that I, when I catch on and I figure out that you're a toxic codependent or you're a covert narcissist pretending to be a victim because, you know, they latch on too. You, you all got to remember these toxic codependents, these cluster Bs, whether it's a histrionic, whether it's a borderline, and I'm talking about females, females with histrionic personality, personality disorder, females with borderline personality disorder, they book me too. Oh yeah. Females that are toxic codependent, they book me too. And they play, they have a victim mindset. Okay. And I don't cut people off immediately. You know, my job as a life coach is to be super patient and empathetic. OK, and I will give people assignments. This is what you need to do. Um, you need to work on this. And I, you know, like I said in my other video, I will sit up with you. I will allow you the space and time to vent about the narcissist. You can cry to me. No judgment. Um, this is a safe space to get it off your chest. However, I am not going to enable you to stay in a victim mindset. I'm going to push you to be your greater self. I'm going to push you to work on your toxic traits. I'm going to push you to, to, uh, get closer to God and, and to tap into your spiritual inner, inner, inner self. Okay. I want you to have inner peace and that takes shadow work that requires you to cut off the toxic people in your life that requires you to change your phone number. Some people be booking me and they not ready. They think they are ready, but they not ready. 
And I'm not going to sit around and enable you to be a victim. That victim mindset will not get far with me. So what happens? I don't speak about this a lot, a lot of the time, but when someone like that is toxic and they keep booking me and I realize that they're not progressing, they're simply booking me because they need to vent and burn my ear off with their bad news or, you know, they're, they're showing signs that they're not developing or growing or evolving as I have pushed them to grow. Then I'm like, oh my God, this individual is toxic codependent. This individual is cluster B. They may be narcissistic. They may be not. They may be borderline. They may be not. They're showing signs of toxic codependency in a repetitive pattern. Every time I coach them, I'm very triggered and I'm not going to continue to work with this individual because I don't see them changing, evolving or growing, nor are they taking my advice seriously. So what happens when I start catching on? I will very professionally in a written letter explain to them that moving forward, I can no longer coach you because I feel that you need um, more intensive, aggressive therapy. And I'll do it very politely and very professionally where, you know, I, I, I won't hurt their feelings, but I'm letting them know um, it would be a waste of your time and my time to further these life coaching sessions. And I'm not a scammer. I could sit here all day like the rest of these fake ass life coaches and string you along forever. And because I, all I want is your money. I'm just going to sit up and listen to your problems. And it's going to go in one ear and out the other. I don't give a shit. I just want your money. I'm not that type of life coach. I, if I feel there's something seriously wrong and I feel that my life coaching is not helping you change or evolve or get rid of your own toxic traits, then there's a there's a bigger problem here that is beyond my expertise. Therefore, I'm going to um, refer you to to move forward. You may need to see a psychiatrist for a full blown evaluation. You need something more intensive because life coaching is not it for you. Well, you know, I've had clients that I've had to do that to, unfortunately, when, you know, I keep it real and they get offended. This further confirms my, uh, you know, I'm very good. My discernment is very good. Their behavior when I reject them. And I'm not nasty when I reject people. I'm honest. I'm truthful. I'm professional and polite. It is a huge narc injury. It is a huge narcissistic injury when I re, re, when I reject when I, and you know, it, I'm not going to do it right away. I will give you the space and room to keep booking with me and I will be analyzing your behavioral traits. And maybe six, seven sessions in, if I see no growth, I will make a determination that you are a cluster B. You have a, a toxic attachment. Um, disorder, something is wrong and it requires the expertise of a psychiatrist. Life coaching is not going to help you anywhere. And I'm honest and I don't want to take your money and I don't want to waste any more of your time or my time. Oh, they don't take it. Y'all, you know what happens when I, when I reject people like that, I get smeared. Oh, I booked a session with her and, you know, I didn't like the way that she talked to me and I don't, I don't like, you know, she told, listen, there's no way you're going to be able to please everybody. I came into this game with this understanding, but anyone that books me has watched my content. They watch numerous. They tell me on the phone. I've seen all your videos. I love your content. Okay. If you watch all my videos, then you know what it is. You know, what's up, you know, spiritual whistleblower is very blunt. I'm upfront. I don't sugarcoat. I don't, I don't fucking play with people. I call a spade a spade. I'm very real. And I'm upfront. So why would you expect anything less in a phone coaching session? So when I become truthful and real with people, and I tell them about themselves and I'm very assertive and I, I point out, I see a pattern of toxic behavior or I tell people you need to cut off your, your, your parents because until you cut off the, you know, I see you're, you're allowing toxic people to keep entering your home and you let these people around your children and you're scared to cut these people off. Therefore you're allowing your children to suffer, which is child abuse. People can't handle when I'm blunt with them. So when I cut people off or they can't handle my constructive blunt criticism, all of a sudden I'm a narcissist. I'm a toxic life coach. No, baby, you're toxic and you can't handle the narcissistic injury because I'm polite and I'm professional. 
but I'm not going to sit up here and baby you or enable your toxic behavior. So one of the dark sides of life coaching is rejecting toxic people, toxic clients who, you know, try to slither in with that victim mindset, pretending to be empaths, knowing deep down inside, they have deeper issues that life coaching can't even address. So I say all this to say, again, this ties into me coaching and teaching you all, you know, if you're going to be a business owner, if you're going to start your own YouTube channel, if you want to start a nail business, a clothing boutique, whatever you decide to do, if you decide to become an entrepreneur, you can expect toxic people to try to sabotage you. They will come in first. They, Oh, I love you. Cause these clients that are toxic, that's the first thing. Our very first phone call spiritual whistleblower. I've watched all your videos. I love you. You're blunt. You're upfront. Oh, I can relate. But then when I start addressing their toxic issues, now it becomes a problem. There go to the sirens. Don't book me if you're not ready for constructive criticism. You already know what, what I'm about. You are, if you watch my videos, I curse. I call motherfuckers out. I call a spade a spade. I hold myself accountable. I, I listen, every fucking thing I've been through in my life, I have held myself accountable. I just don't go around pointing fingers. I allowed these toxic people into my life. I avoided some red flags. I hold myself fully accountable for accepting the bullshit I, I accepted. And I got myself together. Yes, we can't just point fingers at the narc. We too have to, you know, because if you were raised in a narcissistic family like I was, you're definitely, everybody has narc traits, by the way. This is another reason why we got to be careful pointing fingers and calling people narcissists because Everybody, even empaths, empaths have narcissistic traits that they have picked up from their toxic families. And the only way you will know that you have narcissistic traits is when you cut off your family and you start doing self-evaluation work. When you start doing shadow work, when you start looking in the mirror and you get around other people and they mirror you and they say, hey, what you're doing is not cool. And you don't realize that what you're doing is bad because your family members have normalized that behavior. So all empaths, if you were raised in a narcissistic family, there's no possible way that you can avoid not picking up bad behaviors from your family. We all have the traits. We all do, but there's a difference from having the traits from having full blown narcissistic personality disorder. Okay. There is a difference. See, I know my shit. So this is why I have a webinar. I will be teaching and coaching. There's so many people that come to me for business advice. They want to, you know, start a business. They want to write a book. They want to start a YouTube channel. That's all fine and well, but the more successful you become as you elevate and evolve, the more that these demons are going to come out and they, they've been studying you for a while. I know I'm a moving target. I got all types of toxic people watching me and I know they book me. A lot of them catfish me. A lot, I've had people book me simply to try to, to, um, fuck up my, my whole game. And then they go back and they make a smear video about it. See the devil, the devil is always working and trying to disrupt what I got going on, but I stay a hundred steps ahead. So just remember, they try to latch on. They will befriend you. They will try to flatter you. Oh, I'm a huge fan. I love what you're doing. And that's all to latch on. That's the initial stages. Then when they latch on, they're, they're going to study and copy you and mock you. Then the real damage comes because they're going to take everything that they've learned and, and grasped from you. And then they're going to go behind your back and dismantle and smear you. So as a life coach, if you're planning to be a life coach, um, this is the dark side of life coaching in this toxic community. I have wonderful clients that keep coming back. And then there are the toxic ones that I reject because I picked up on there. I see a pattern of toxic behavior and I tell I'm real with them. I keep it real. You need more intensive therapy with a psychiatrist. Life coaching is not it for you, or at least my type of life coaching, because I'm not going to continue to string you along and take your money. And I know that it's not getting you anywhere. You're not progressing. So they, that's a narc injury. They, they, don't, they don't care about the constructive criticism. They're just pissed off that they've been rejected by spiritual whistleblower. So it's a love hate thing with these narcs and toxic codependents. So now I'm being smeared and I, I'm, my, my reputation is being destroyed because they were rejected because I called out their toxic behavior in our coaching sessions.
yeah, it's 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 really it's a catch 22. It's not going to disrupt how I do things. I'm still going to move forward with life coaching. It comes, you know, with the success comes the bad stuff and you just got to, you know, propel through it. You got to bulldoze through it and continue to do the good work. And just know that if what you're doing is ordained and it's, it's uh, you know, God is in the forefront of it, it's, you're going to come out on top. You, you know, you just need to learn from the bad experiences as you go along. So look out for the webinar, ladies. It's coming out soon. Um, I got a whole bunch of surprises, actually. I never speak about the shit, really, that I'm doing. The only reason I'm talking about the webinar is because I mentioned it two months ago, and I follow through on everything that I, that I talk about. But I do have some surprises for y'all. So this year, I'm turning things up, okay? Y'all have a blessed and beautiful day. This has been a Spiritual Whistleblower. Love you.